This is McLeod Insights, where we feature conversations with longtime transportation industry veterans who are now team members at McLeod Software. Our goal is to support and empower our customers by helping them learn about proven ideas and best practices that will have a positive impact on how they run their companies. Let's dive in. Hello, uh, I am Ahmed Ibrahim uh, from McLeod Software. Uh, I have the privilege of uh, having with me uh, Mr. Alan Washburn, uh, Vice President of Operations uh, Universal Logistics, and uh, Dr. Uh, Christopher Boone, a Supply Chain Professor at uh, Mississippi State University. Uh, welcome both. Uh, let's get right into it. Um, so, Alan, uh, what prompted Universal and uh, you to uh, you know, get involved with the Mississippi State University Supply Chain Program and getting McLeod engaged. Okay. One of our ownership team, Ken Ezel, he's a Mississippi State alum, and he wants to support Mississippi State in any way he can, not only on the sports side, but also on the academic side. Um, he had become uh, working with the uh, business school and was asked to uh, judge an event for I think Dr. Boone's class, and upon seeing the data the students had, he had mentioned that the data was kind of outdated and needed to be refreshed. So he came back to our office and we started talking and he had mentioned that maybe we started reaching out to some of our partners to see how we could get a, a updated, refreshed part to the data for the students. Upon doing so, we talked with McLeod um, McLeod was gracious to um, start the conversation of how we can maybe let them students use some of the software, see some of the data, uh, it become more relevant, more lifelike to what the industry is seeing. And I think that was a good first step for us to kind of create our relationship here. Yeah, wonderful. And uh, Dr. Boone, uh, could you uh, share a little about your supply chain program at, at Mississippi State? Yeah, absolutely. First, thank you for this opportunity to, to be here and uh, and to share a little bit about our story and our partnership with Universal and, and, and the cloud as well. So uh, Mississippi State's had a logistics transportation minor or concentration uh, since the 1950s. So it's uh, logistics has been part of um, Mississippi State. Our program has existed since the 1950s. We have a lot of alumni that are out in the industry, people that are now leading, uh, owning their own trucking companies. And so we have a lot of people in this industry that are uh, from Mississippi State University. But up until recently, we didn't have a standalone major. And so beginning in 2019, the college leadership decided to emphasize supply chain and logistics specifically. And so we added core classes, both at the graduate and undergraduate level. And then in 2021, we were able to, uh, with the support and kind of actually encouragement of some of those alumni, create a standalone major in supply chain logistics. And so now at Mississippi State University, students can come and actually major in supply chain logistics. And uh, in just two short years, we're now at our, our, we have over 135 students that are in the program and majoring supply chain logistics and excited about entering this industry and the career opportunities it offers. Yeah. Yeah, so Dr. Boone, you've been um, published frequently in the, uh, you know, the your annual research you do on the annual trends of logistics and transportation in the mm -hmm. uh, logistics magazine. Uh, you've done some extensive research on uh, the workforce generation and the evolutions there. Uh, what uh, are some of the key takeaways uh, that, uh, from your research? Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. So it's the, I think we're in the, this will be the 33rd year of the annual study of trends in logistics and transportation. And it's something that's been published by Logistics Management Magazine for a number of years. And really what, it's, what, what it does is it's an opportunity for us to get insights from industry. So these are surveys done of industry professionals that... Um, we, we kind of shift the topics you know, for over time. So we've recently been focused on technology and talent and increasingly talent as the talent kind of issue in our industry has reached kind of a crisis status. I think people, some people have called it a tsunami or the perfect storm, whatever you want to call it. And so that's become a kind of a focus for us. So what we're, what we're seeing, Ahmed, is, is people recognizing that um, or expressing that talent is an issue. And, and, we, and so you combine that with the other research and what we find is that it's an issue out, not just for our industry, for everyone. So if you look at some of the uh, Chamber of Commerce data, for example, in the U.S., they show that currently, as of today, I think there's only 0.71 people available, workers available for every open position. So that means we don't have enough workers uh, to do all the jobs that need to be done. So what does that mean for us in logistics and transportation, which we are a people 
heavy, reliant industry. So what do we do? And so part of what the research has been for us is how can we learn more about what companies are doing to try to kind of manage that whole value chain of talent, right? How can they better uh, recruit talent? How can they better develop talent? How can they better retain talent? And so, so we've been able to learn a lot about that and been able to share that, share some of that in the recent conference and through the publication and things like that. So what we find is that companies are increasingly, um, if they're not, they're, they realize that they should be being more strategic about uh, talent, how they're finding it, developing and retaining it. Yeah, yeah. So I'd love to get more thoughts. I know you've done some work on the Gen, Gen Z's mm -hmm. and how their needs are. And uh, uh, Mr. Washburn, what have your experiences been in uh, hiring uh, people of that uh, generation in terms of what, how to keep them motivated, how to keep them excited? Uh, what have you all learned in your hiring process and retaining and uh, uh, you know, cultivating uh, that talent? Well, it is different from the generation that I grew up in and the fact that, you know, you only know what you know for your generation, but you always in business, things are changing. So you want to be uh, adaptive to change and seeing where uh, you can look for new resources um, and looking for our new talent, um, the new, new ones to our industry have grown up most likely with a screen in their face from the time they were born to now. Um, they're very much able to multitask and do multiple things at once. Even while talking to you, they can be doing something, looking at a computer screen. So uh, you have to embrace the fact that the talent pool is different than what you're used to and you need to uh, be adapted to that change. Um, how you motivate. Um, we have seen that a lot of positive reinforcement on the um, tasks that are at hand. Um, much like I, I don't like uh, having reviews every year, but uh, they they want them more often than that. Maybe every quarter to let them know you know this is the path that you're on. Uh, this is where you know we maybe can refocus some some of your uh, learnings and just to uh, keep them engaged. And um, I know Dr. Boone maybe talk about a little later on, maybe even some reverse mentorship in the fact that maybe they could help um, our newer or our older generation embrace some of the newer technologies that are out there. Yeah, yeah. And, and well, and so going along with that, I think a couple of things, one for, you know, the listeners employer, one is to, to recognize that um, just again, demographically as we see shifts, that you need to realize that within the next five years, I think the projections are that 70% of the workforce is gonna be Gen Z and millennials, right? And so the first thing is, I think it's just the realization of the, the workers that are available are from a different generation. Now we tend to stereotype everyone into one of those groups, um, which is always risk at doing that. But I think the reality of it is, is recognizing that people in that generation uh, are looking for different things from work, right? What that means to them. And so I think there's lots of content out there that kind of discusses that. So, but I think just acknowledging it, right? And then I'm trying to understand what is it that this generation is looking for and work. That's why, you know, we've heard words like great resignation. I think those are more symptoms of people really what they're, when people come to work every day, what is it they're really wanting to gain from that? And so what our research has shown and my interaction with students every day is, um, you know, they want to know that the work that they're doing matters, right? And um, that they're, what they believe in is aligned with the company and, and those types of things. But that feedback piece of it, I think, is really important too. Is they they want to know that they're progressing in the right direction. One of the one of the terms that's been used to characterize this generation is anxiety, right? They want a lot of agency, so you know they they like the ability to be able to control their own direction. But there's also a lot of anxiety because they realize I don't know what I don't know, and so I want to make sure that what I'm. So it, it's almost needing a, a kind of a, a guide. Like yes, you're doing great. Keep moving. Go in the right direction. And so a lot of it's just continuous encouragement, I think, right. as well. And so oftentimes bosses aren't, you know, if you're not, that's not the culture or the way you were done, then, then it's something that requires adaptation. So I think part of it is just recognizing that's the future of the workforce. And then how might we need to think organizationally, think different about what they're looking for and uh, how can we align those structures to kind of come and meet those needs, whether it be flexibility, feedback, um, you know, exposure to different topics, reverse mentoring, right? Yeah. How, how are they going to learn from that? So uh, a culture within the organization that recognizes there's that everyone uh, you know, my grandfather used to say that everybody knows something you don't know, so everyone can be your teacher. And so I think like embracing that culturally is uh, can be very powerful. So recognizing is a you know the humility of saying, hey, this young person, 
they may not know anything about the business, but they probably can help me better understand this technology. Let's have a discussion, right? Because I also have knowledge that I can impart upon them that they, they don't know, that they can't know. And so I think it's, it's recognizing there's a difference and then understanding how you can align that so that the whole organization is stronger and better and, and uh, can be more competitive in the market and, and retain talent because oh, you're yeah. providing that, that piece that they're looking for from work. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and again, I think it's, um, you know, uh, there, there are misconceptions, right, about the millennials and the, the Gen Z that uh, they get bored too easily. They don't have any sense of uh, a loyalty, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and they want to change jobs or change roles, no? And I can speak from personal experience. I've got, uh, me and my wife have uh, two young men uh, who are in that uh, Gen Z category in college. Uh, and I've seen uh, how they, the, the, the different ways in which they learn, what motivates them. So what advice could you give to uh, you know, our customers on things to keep in mind as, as they work with, you know, examples like that reverse mentoring, examples like agency and sense, sense of alignment and uh, being able to feel that they are part of something bigger and not a wheel in the cog. Uh, even though that's an, uh, you know, a need for any, any professional, including people of our age category. Mm-hmm. But what's different? What's unique? What can our customers do um, uh, to, in particular, address uh, the needs of the Gen Zs and the millennials? I would say that the first thing to do is, um, you know, when they are comfortable doing a task or, you know, they are fulfilling the task that you've asked, um, you know, kind of see what direction they want to go in, in your review process or just in your daily talking to see what area they may want to explore and kind of push that way to open up new doors, new opportunities, kind of keep it fresh where they're not uh, stagnant in where they are where it becomes, well, I've just got to go to work today. You want to keep things fresh, keep things moving along. And as new opportunities present themselves, whether it's a new customer coming on board, a new problem that you have, include them in part of the solution because the more you bring those type of perspectives in, will open up new opportunities. Yeah, I think um, the first thing I'd say is complaining is not a strategy, right? So just, uh, just suggesting that people don't want to work or whatever, um, that, that's a convenient, and, and there's certainly some truth to that, possibly. But, but I think the reality of it is, is that in today, especially in this, you know, with this generation, they're they're looking at work differently. They're they're the reasons why they work are different. Everybody wants to get paid, right? So it's not it's not necessarily a money thing. Um, but I think they're just looking for more, and so that I think the reality of it is, is companies have to kind of think through and understand that. So you know, some of the things that we're seeing companies do, and you know, going back to some of, of Alan's points, is uh, recognizing that students have some anxiety again about accepting a job, for example. So I, I think, you know, in some of our, we were talking before we started recording that some of the examples I see with students is they'll get a job offer from a company that has a very big brand, but it's a specific job, right? It's a, you're going to be a, an operations manager, you know, pretty generic term versus a, a different company that offers them a rotational program. And almost in every instance, they'll accept the job for a rotational program. Well, why is that? Well, there's anxiety or, or this, what if I don't like that? Right. And uh, so I think you just have to recognize that exists versus a rotational program represents to them an opportunity to learn, to explore, to find something that they feel like is a really good fit. Right. And so does your does your organization have a structure that allows that that allows learning? Maybe your organization isn't big enough to have a rotational program. Well, get creative. Right. So uh, if they have you know a particular task, is there maybe an opportunity where you could say, you know, Alan, we met one of your young employees, you know, you guys today. Is there a topic our company needs to know about? Can we have them go research that, and become the subject matter expert for our for our particular uh, organization on that topic, and then come back and present it? You know, what, what does that do? A, that gives them that extra thing they can do, uh, shows that you value their opinion, you're about allowing them to contribute to the organization. What they're doing is matters, going to help the organization be better. And so, some of it I think is just being flexible, and uh, and recognizing again. You know, meeting those needs in terms of the work, giving them that sense of being able to be satisfied and, and being open to doing things maybe a little bit differently than, than we've done before. Um, I think those are going to be really be the keys to success in terms of, again, that whole value chain of, of, of talent. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great segue into, I know as a part of your vision at Mississippi State is to complement, uh, you know, content learning through experiential learning. Mm-hmm. Um, could you tell us a little bit more on that vision of yours? Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to claim it as my vision. I mean, I think it's uh, it's certainly a broader vision. I think academia in, in, in general, but I think for me personally, it's a realization that if, if my only value in front of a classroom is content, um, 
and there's there's a lot better sources, right? And they're a lot faster, a lot smarter, and those kind of things. And so, um, but I think what really what we're saying is when you talk to students, right? If you think about a student coming in as a as a customer, they're coming in to to learn, they're paying to be at the university, but also our stakeholders, right? They're also a product, and so we we get feedback from both. And I think what we what we're finding is that you know the the skills that are missing, the skills that are valued, uh, the things that students are most are least comfortable about isn't really content, right? I think we were, you know, you talk about this generation, I read a, um, a quote that said, this is the first generation that did not have to go to their parents for information, right? So content's not a thing for them. They can find it very quickly. If they don't know, they'll just look it up. There's probably a TikTok video of someone dancing to it, right? I mean, there's just, there's ways to get information, but what they don't have is experiences. What they don't have are some of the soft skills that companies value, and that's what we're hearing. So how do you get those soft skills, it's 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 not for me lecturing you on that, right? That's not a content thing. That Those are skills that are gained from experiences. If you wanna become a better problem solver, you need to solve problems, right? If you wanna be a better critical thinker, you need to be challenged on thinking about tough, complex problems. And so I think the nature of how we're teaching students to meet their needs, as well as prepare them for the types of jobs that they're that they're wanting and to be as successful as they all want to be, those are the skills that are important. So I think it's it's just a trend. It's a it's being responsive to, you know, really what the needs of the students and our employers are, and it's to uh, and we can only do that through experiences. And so that's one of the reasons why this type of partnership is is we talk more about that is so important, uh, because again, he, he was kind about Ken's comments when he came in. You know, the, the data he said my data stinks. I think maybe that was the maybe he'd used it before, but, <laughs> but 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 he was right. I mean, it, and it wasn't that it's that it was it was static, right? It wasn't. It wasn't dynamic like our industry is. And so when he's looking at it, he's like, well, that's that's old. That's not current, right? And and so, but I, I can't do that alone. So it takes these partnerships to, to be able to kind of do that. And and so that's one of the reasons why we're so excited about, you know, uh, appreciative uh, of, of Ken and Universal and, and McLeod and, and excited about what this is going to allow us to do in the classroom to help create more of those experiences. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, Alan, one of our very esteemed customers, uh, you know, calls this uh, process like, working with the new hires who have come out line ready, right? right? Um, so what is your experience has been in uh, the value that, uh, you know, new hires bring with exposure to that exp experiential learning? Uh, may that be through a rotational kind of a role or may that be through hands-on experience on working on a, on a, on a, on a cloud software? Well, uh, we, as far as Universal is concerned, we've hired people that have never even seen a truck or know what a truck is to people that have had the opportunity to be in a program such as Dr. Boone's or somewhere else and then had um, software experience with great companies like McLeod. And what we've seen is when they have that background, that uh, supply chain background and or knowledge of the McLeod software system, it just helps us so far leaps and bounds for the training to start to move that person along into where they're gonna fit into our organization so I think it's a, a great tool, a great uh, exposure for companies like ours in this partnership where the students get hands-on experience knowing that the technology is out there in our industry. Um, supply chain, you know, in the past has been viewed as one that is just a truck going down the road and it's just so much more that goes into it, so much more of the cost uh, that can be affected because if you can provide your customer the best price on their transportation, they can sell their product for a lower price and they can have a competitive advantage at the end of the day to, to make them um, have more sales. Yeah, and Dr. Boone, I know uh, one of the things you are gonna do this semester, to my understanding, is uh, have these uh, simulation uh, where your, uh, your, your project teams mm -hmm. are gonna be role playing uh, maybe a group will be role playing as a shipper, and uh, another group uh, role playing as either a carrier or a broker. So, and, and that's part of that experiential learning. Absolutely. So, that for them to be able to to kind of hear the challenges people go through in real life. So, would you elaborate a little bit on on that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So, I think you know, being able to the, the, having the access to the cloud tool is going to allow us to do things that we can't do today. Um, one is, I think, just expose them to the technology, right? So I think one of the things that is, um, you know, part of the research we talked about before, one of the challenges with our industry is the perception of our industry, as, as Alan was talking about, that it's, oh, it's just a truck going down the road. That's a huge part of it, obviously, right? But 
the, just the technology behind it, all the all the moving parts of that. And so I think being able to put their hands on the technology piece of the industry is one way of helping us, you know, change that perception. The other thing is, is it allows them to actually see behind the curtain of what it really takes to move freight from point A to point B, whether you're a freight broker, you're a shipper, you're a carrier. And so allowing them to get in and do the and see the tool and to get a better understanding. So that static data that I had before is to and the, is to be able to have live data. So to get to them to understand that, well, yeah, that's what it costs to move that last month. That's not what it costs today. This is a dynamic industry, right? It ebbs and flows. It, it changes during the time of day that you're trying to get, you know, and so you just can't do that with a static set of data. So it really does. This this allows us to show them that, you know, the really behind the scenes, but bigger than that, I mean, I think is that those, that's just business, right? It's, yeah. it's even bigger than just transportation, but, you know, within the context of this class, I think it's, uh, so even students that decide not to go into the industry, they're still going to walk away with an experience of understanding. I need to understand what something costs, uh, what I can get it to market for, what, you know, what the market will bear. And is that going to be enough for me to be competitive and, and, and stay in business? And so I think we're going to be at a, and all students coming out of there are going to be able to gain that particular experience. The other benefit for us, I see, and we've already seen this as, um, as I've shared with you previously, is that because employers, you know, onboarding, for example, you know, is, takes time and costs. So, for a student just to be able to, you know, I don't want to oversell how much I'm going to be able to teach them about McLeod, but the reality of it is they're going to be exposed to an industry leading software and they're going to be able to go in and talk about that in interviews. So we're already seeing interest from companies that we don't have relationships with and that, or haven't had relationships in the past who are you're interested in recruiting and talking to our students about internships and career opportunities because they're going to have this experience. So that's a signal from the market to us as well that this is really important to them. And so that tells us this is really important to our students, important for us. And uh, again, that's why this relationship is so important. And again, why we're so grateful uh, for this opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that reminds me of the onboarding as we were discussing earlier about, you know, how you all, um, uh, you know, from as an employer, uh, look at, you know, hey, what can we, what can you all do to in, increase the space at which employers become onboarded and proficient? And you had mentioned some of the automation and, and AI, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, the whole, the hype and the topic around AI, uh, and we know there's a lot of hype, but at the same time, we have also seen some very useful, uh, practical implications and applications of that in supply chain as well as the trucking industry. You know, we at McLeod, uh, with our stature, have uh, really feel like we have an obligation uh, to our customers to help them navigate. Uh, you know, there's so much hype, there's so much, you know, fiction out there that our obligation is to help our customers navigate through what's fact, what's fiction, what mm -hmm. real AI is and what it's not. So, you know, maybe a question for both of you. Uh, how do you all see AI play and the real implications of things like generative AI, things like uh, computer visions? Um, how do you all see that play in, uh, you know, over the next, you know, couple of years, right, mm -hmm. uh, in, in preparing students on uh, in being more equipped for the workforce? Uh, so, and, and the same thing from a employer standpoint. So, right. Alan? Mm -hmm. um, I would just like to say that, you know, AI is gonna be a tool in our toolbox. We feel it's gonna complement our workforce. As Dr. Boone mentioned just a few minutes ago, I think point, you said 0.7, uh, 0 0.7 jobs or workers, available, workers yeah. available. So some, we have to get 0.3 in there to fill that slot. So if I can use the AI technology to fill that point three to get my workforce up to speed, I've created um, help for my employee. Um, one way that we have used this uh, in the past is um, one of our employees, Max Birch, was sending out a schedule each week to one of our terminals where it was the data was gathered from a cloud and then a spreadsheet was generated to send that schedule out. Um, what he did was he used chat GPT to uh, set it, write a set of formulas mm -hmm. where that was downloaded, put into the spreadsheet. What was taking an hour to populate each week was down to three or four minutes. So that time that that worker now has available to talk to the customer, work on other items that need attention and not be a data entry seems to help tremendously. Yeah. I, so I mean, my big answer would be, I, I don't know. Right. Like, I mean, it's uh, uh, you have to ask someone much smarter than me to, to tell you where it's going. I, I would say, though, that uh, I'm incredibly optimistic and, and excited about the opportunities, I think, and the potential of it to uh, 
the, the impact that it can have. And I, and, and I think part of it is that I think it's obvious that there's going to be opportunities for efficiency, right? To allow people to, to reduce some of those repetitive types of tasks. There's just things that we can we can work smarter, not harder, right? And I think there's going to be some tools that allow us to do that. And I think that's going to be necessary because we do have a talent skills gap. And so I think that it's going to meet some of that need, just as Alan kind of talked about. Um, I, I think in terms of, I think our students are, you know, just naturally, they're, they're inquisitive, they're using it, they're, they're going to be a lot more comfortable with some of those types of things. I think in the broader picture of kind of talent and those types of things that we've talked about, I think one of the things for companies to kind of keep in mind is just recognizing there's also a lot of fear associated with it. So, you know, what's the conversation you're having in your organization about it? Um, you know, depending on if you Google it, you could find that, you know, your job's going to be gone in a year or, or those kind of things. And so, um, it might be different, you know, and so the organization I think would be would benefit from having open conversations about that just so that you can address the potential fear of, of you know, is that going to impact my job? And then do you have a plan? Right. So as jobs do change and now, you know, you don't have to do that. Max has capacity. Like what's what's the best way to continue to use those skills, right? To continue to allow him to add value to the organization, continue to contribute and, and do other things. And so, you know, I think you know, addressing it, being forward with it, thinking about it and trying to do those things. I think the other piece of it too, though, is that I, that I see is that is allow us is it as beneficial as it can be to addressing the skills gap. I think the experiential gap is something that it's going to it, it could potentially increase. What I mean by that is, think about you know many of us as you came into a new organization, you're learning the industry. Sometimes you learn through those repetitive tasks. You learn things about the business. You learn things about how the company operates and things like that. Well, if much of that gets automated, our are we missing out on some of those opportunities, right? And, and so are we gonna get to a point to where, you know, they got all the tools and they can do some of these things, but that we miss the opportunity for them to truly learn and understand why that works that way. And so I think, again, that's part of the, do you have a plan? And so I think that's where, again, internally, some of that reverse mentoring um, is helping. So you know, Alan might not, maybe he's not the guy that you, you know, he's, he's much rather Max go to chat, Max, right? Yeah, go, to chat, you go to chat GPT <laughs> and do that. But then you can come back into him and say, well, this is why this is really important. Let's talk about that, right? So I think yeah. there's this opportunity to really leverage that uh, experience within that, the reverse mentoring, uh, that kind of thing, to make sure that we, we don't miss the experiential piece of that because yeah. we've replaced those tasks that might have provided that experience in the past. So I think we just have to be thoughtful and yeah. uh, and, and about it. It's going to have an impact. I wish I could. I knew what it was. I, I could tell you. Uh, but I think we need to be talking about it. It doesn't need to be something we avoid. And uh, and we look for opportunities for everyone to get, get better and more efficient using it. Yeah, and what from the you know, deep research we have been doing in this field, um, and we know it's about, you know, it's, what we have learned is not about a human versus a machine. It is human plus machine. That's right. Um, you know, in fact, talking back about the implications in the transportation industry, I had the privilege of uh, being at a very prestigious conference last week at uh, the BGSA, uh, led by Ben Gordon, and all the top CEOs, uh, you know, trucking industry, logistics, supply chain, transportation software. The key thing that I, one big takeaway among, among several was that the, you know, with the freight volumes the way they are, anemic growth, uh, freight rates are not, you know, the margins, cost optimization, cost per mile, a uh, cost per transaction. Uh, is you know paramount and in, 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 in the forefront of every leadership in the supply chain, and, and we believe AI type of uh, automation efficiency gains is going to play a significant role uh, in, in the current dynamics of the freight market. And I think those companies who take advantage of it uh, will really be uh, positioned pretty well. That's correct, most definitely. So, Dr. Boone, uh, on I know you are using this semester uh, the McLeod software. We appreciate the opportunity to work with both of you, and typically that's what we have seen. Where this works great is where we have we have one or more of our customers involved mm -hmm. as a part of the process. So, uh, could you share a little on how you are planning to use the McLeod TMS uh, as part of your uh, curriculum? Um, and yeah. giving that exposure to students. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, uh, for, for us, this is, again, will be our first time. And, and, and McLeod has partnerships with other universities using it as well. So at Auburn University, University of North Georgia. And I think what you find is every school is looking or using it a little bit differently to kind of shape it. I think that's reflected based by, by, by the, the students, the program, and all those kind of things. So, so for us at Mississippi State, I'm looking to incorporate this into a transportation class that has historically always been based on a big data analysis kind of 
uh, do, do a bunch of research, groups come in and do a presentation. And so we're looking to, again, enhance that and by using McLeod software. So by giving them a, a problem which they would actually go in and use McLeod to, to look at market rates, look at costs, do pricing, those types of things, uh, to be able to formulate a plan that they would then pitch to senior leadership. At, at all, and kind of a, that's the way it culminates for us is in a, in a boardroom, kind of you know, similar to the one we're in here, and they make a pitch to the presentation to industry professionals so they can get feedback on what they did well and, and those types of things. And more importantly, to give them that experience, right? What So that when they walk away from that, we do that presentation, but then we have a discussion afterwards. And the employers, those managed senior managers are able to give our students feedback on what a decision maker is looking for in these types of settings. So our students, they get, the, they get to use the tool, they get to prepare a presentation, do data analysis, do a presentation, and then get feedback from an employer um, you know, a senior leader, we've had CEOs, I mean, uh, business owners. And, right. and then so they're getting this incredible rich opportunity, uh, you know, to really kind of wrap that all up. And, and many of them are very nervous about it. I'll be honest with you in terms of going in, but all of them understand the importance of that, of that experience, because I tell them, wouldn't you rather get that feedback now than, no. you know, you, you just work six months and you go right. in and, and you, you don't do well. Right. And your boss is like, well, what do you mean? We just spent six months, you know, prepping this pitch. And so uh, it just creates a really rich opportunity for us uh, to be able to do that. Plus, it gets our students in front of uh, in front of leaders and it allows them to gain, again, those added insights and experiential learning. So we're, we're super excited about it. Um, I think the biggest limitation in the med will be me, right? Like how, how much can I learn, how quick, you know, uh, to be able to pitch it to the students? Because I'm sure they're going to pick up on it much quicker than, than, yeah. than I do. But I, I can tell you it's in the syllabus. Our students are excited about it. I'm getting questions about it. And so uh, we're really, really ready to get started. So yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah, thank you. And that's where I think, Alan, you know, you and your team come in. Right. You know, it's one thing for us to train you and the students, but, you know, uh, get the students getting some exposure, real use cases from a customer right. that becomes invaluable. And we have seen that work out in some of the other university programs we've been engaged with. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, you know, as we, uh, you know, bring this to a wrap, um, you know, what advice, uh, Alan, would you give to your to, you know, your fellow work, you know, uh, trucking and uh, carriers and brokers and McLeod customers. And, you know, how should others, what, what, how should others engage with univer local universities? And they don't even have to be local, right? right. Uh, Most definitely. They, you guys are not local to uh, right. MSU, but you guys are actively engaged. Right. So what steps can they take? What should they expect? What, what's in it for them okay. uh, to, to get engaged? Well, that's a good question. And I would just like to say that, you know, Many of us have gone out and said, who's going to teach the younger generation coming in? And the responsibility really falls on all of us. So all of us have a school or a program or someone around us in which um, there's young people out working and learning, trying to learn to, to come into our industry. And one of the best ways is if you have a supply chain program that you're around or university, uh, reach out to them, see how you can become involved in a career fair, uh, attend some events, uh, talk with the students, find out you know what they're looking for, uh, talk to some professors, uh, reach out to them because they're a great resource into um, you know what the students are asking them. So that's a, a great opportunity to uh, get involved. Um, as McLeod continues to grow with some of their sponsorships, and if you're a McLeod customer, maybe reach out to the McLeod team and say, hey, do you know, y'all work with any universities around, or how can I work with some of the universities that, that, that you are working with to provide sponsorship, or um, how can I get involved in a career fair to source talent? Because I know that that would be a great opportunity to uh, help our industry along and with some of the great things that you're doing at Mississippi State, um, you know, that, that talent pool is going to be great. The real life experiences are going to be something that you can draw upon to increase your business. So I think it's a win-win for our industry and a win-win for, for our community. Yeah, and you had mentioned, uh, you know, that about the uh, value students get when some of the some of our customers, right. I mean, you all have sponsored students to come to our user conference. Right. And that's the exposure they get. Right. Um, the first, um, I, 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 this has happened twice, and I was able to see it uh, firsthand both times is when the students walked there on the, the hall floor where all the vendors, 
and uh, the eyes become as big as saucers because of all the vendors that are there and they can just see how big the transportation industry is not just on paper or someone coming to talk about it but just one one event and McLeod has done a great job of bringing in um, uh, industry team leaders uh, industry vendors and by having them go around talk with talk with them about what their product does um, what they can do to um, use the product or how it can be incorporated in something that they want to learn about I just it's just invaluable and you know you can see the smiles on their faces talking with them at the end of the day it's been a long day going to going to classes or you know what during events but they're just as spry and ready to go the next day as is anybody and, and yeah. if I could add to that, just yeah. it, why it's so important, right? I think we've talked about experiential learning and, and you know, the, the surveys that we see from industry is that students need these skills, right? And to create those skills, we need to be able to create experiences. And, and we're, we can only do that through the partnerships, right? And so engaging with industry to be able to do that. Um, so I think big picture of that it's, it's, it's just that's the way I think education is going or it needs to go. I know that's the way we're thinking about it specifically. Uh, but the other part of it, I think specific to our industry that Alan just talked about and why this is so important. I think when you when students go to university, I mean, again, our major's only been in existence in 2021. We have our first couple of freshmen that are coming to the university to major in supply chain. The reality is many you know, other than some of the big major programs around the nation, most people go to school for something else and they discover supply chain. That's been the trend of, you know, for, for a number of years. And so how do they how do they get a sense of whether this is something they want to do? I mean, so they hear it from their friends and things like that. But what's really been impactful for us is being able to take students to some of these events and again, let them walk in, let them see kind of what's going on. And so we've seen that have a, an immense impact on the students that attended and others and actually now making decisions to enter the industry because they were able to see behind the curtain, behind the scenes and to see how big it is uh, and all the moving parts and get beyond kind of their basic, you know, initial understanding. And so I think it's just, it, it's so much, I can't overemphasize how important it is for students to be able to see the industry, to get to know the companies, recognize the brands. Uh, so being, you know, being present, being visible on campus has benefits both for the individual companies, for, but also for our industry and also just creating experiences that all employers value. So yeah. it's a, it's a win, 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 I think. All the way yeah. Around. And would you all say, I mean, it's like, you know, it's not just a one sided where the university gets the benefit of having its people hired through career affairs or employers. We, we, what we have seen is uh, it's fairly a it's quite a symbiotic relationship. Right. Uh, uh, between the universities and the participating customers right uh, would you say that's that has been your experience so far uh, yes i would say i mean it's we all benefit because um if a student at mississippi state that you know gains something down the road and starts using mcleod or you know becomes a traffic manager somewhere and one day you said oh yeah i remember universal or whatever the case may be I, you know you don't know the long-term effects but um we are bettering the industry as a whole by by this uh, partnership and that's something that we all can all be proud of yeah, yeah absolutely yeah yeah and we certainly hope so right i mean that's the objective is to um i mean as a public institution that, that's kind of our we should be benefiting both you know all right. sides and so um I think we find ourselves in the unique position of the, the students and the employers. And I think what, what increasingly so, it's that trying to find ways to facilitate those relationships and create more of those types of opportunities. So yeah, certainly our, our goal is to to make sure that it is mutually beneficial or valuable to all parties involved. So that's, that's the only way we're all gonna be successful and keep, continue to go this route. Yeah, yeah, and McLeod is, you know, we are very honored to be uh, <clears throat> participating with uh, Mississippi State and our customers, uh, so this is, you know, as a part of our giving back to the regional workforce, giving back to our customers, giving back to our collective good. Uh, it's really been a privilege for us to work with you all and other university programs, which, you know, fortunately are growing. Mm -hmm. we, we get inquiries from customers on a frequent basis and from different colleges. So, again, I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and, uh, and the insights you all have provided. So thank you all very much for your time. Okay. Um, and uh, McLeod Software will be hosting a couple of more events uh, with uh, participating colleges and universities uh, uh, with Auburn University as well as the uh, University of North Georgia over the next uh, couple of months. And thank Matt, you. before you before you cut off, I'm yeah. sorry, I, and it's just I, I want to say thank you to you, right? Sure. And uh, and to the group. And so you mentioned those other two schools. And and again, I think it's 
it's a, it's a credit to, to, to McLeod because each of those schools is using it a little bit differently, right? And so oftentimes, you know, our, there's, here's this, here's how we do it, adapt, right? And so I think uh, very grateful for the flexibility that you guys have shown in terms of helping us find what fits best for our students and for our program. And I know you've done that for the other schools as well. And then the partnership with Universal, right? This wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had the, we wouldn't have the relationship. We wouldn't have had the opportunity to kind of do this uh, without that. And so uh, again, we're very, very grateful uh, for that. Grateful for this opportunity, uh, even though I did just cut you off. So no, I appreciate fine. that. Thank but, you, but uh, thank you again. Yeah, but, but thank, thank you, you very much. much. I appreciate yeah. this opportunity, but, but really most important, the opportunity just to publicly, uh, you know, uh, as I can possibly can be, just say thank you for that. And your team, Paul, Nate, everyone, the folks who have been helping with the installation, right. uh, all those kinds of things. It's, um, it's, it's been, we've been working a long time to get this. It takes a lot of work, uh, but I think it's, it's clear to see that the benefits are going to far outweigh, uh, you know, the, the effort we put into it. We're grateful for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank well, you. Very insightful. Thank, thank you very much for, all that, that you've done to support, you know, what we're trying to do as well. Yeah, we are looking forward to helping you all's program grow and uh, thrive further. Thank you. Okay.